What's up? Mentorship Freaks is the daily dose of the mentorship motivator. We're continuing the theme this week. We talked about money. Then we talked about mistakes you're making during the sale. Today we're going to talk about how does your prospect, how does your customer actually want to be treated? What's going through their head? How do you need to treat them? What are they thinking about? What's the conversation they're having in their in their head? Well, the first thing is they don't they don't want a used car salesman. They don't want old school sales tactics, high pressure sales tactics, all those sleaze ball things. Let me go talk to my manager and all this shit, the manager that doesn't exist. They don't want that stuff. That's the first thing. They don't want that sleaze ball used car salesman. They want a professional. They want educational. They want educational selling. They want you to be the co-buyer. That's what they want. They want a friend to help them make a decision that they're not going to regret. That's what they want. They want education and solution-based selling. That's what they're looking for nowadays because they're getting education looking on the, you know, they can find a lot of information nowadays, obviously, on Google, on the internet. But but also, importantly, they want to be heard. They want someone to listen to them. No one, listen, no one in their life is fucking listening to them. They're getting ignored everywhere. They're getting ignored at work with their friends and at home. Everyone else is selfish and worried about themselves. When they come to you for whatever it is, for your product, for your service, they just want to be heard. They want to be heard. They want someone to listen to them, someone to listen to their problems, what they, their needs, what they want even. Not even just their needs. What do they want? So they want someone just to listen to them, hear them out, and help them make a, the right decision. And when it when it comes to that being heard, they, they, they don't want back a bunch of industry freaking jargon. Imagine I started telling them what muscle inserts into this and that. But all the, all the woman wants to do is fit into her freaking genes. And I'm telling her about all this digestion and where, where the glycogen goes and the, the, it's stored in the liver and all this other stuff. She's going to be like, what the fuck? She's going to be confused. They want simple facts. They want details on how you are going to solve their problem. How am I going to help her fit in her genes? She doesn't give a damn about the muscle insertions and what's attached to the bone and where and this and that. Obviously, certain industries, you need to have that level of detail. But in general, they want simple facts. They want simple facts. And the key word there, well, two key words, simple facts. Simple means, obviously, that they can understand and facts, they want you to tell the freaking truth. They don't want you to give them a bunch of bullshit. They don't want you to tell them, they want the truth. They don't want you to tell them something that you're not going to come through with it. You're not going to promise. Don't say, and I hear it a lot, and, and some high level speakers still do this stuff and it works for them, whatever. But in general, I hate, I don't like it when you say, someone says, well, to be honest, or honestly, or to tell you the truth, so you're having a conversation with someone, right? And say, midway through the conversation, that you ask them a question. And they say, well, to tell you the truth, well, why did you have to say to tell you the truth? I'm assuming you're telling me the fucking truth the entire time. Are you now saying that you didn't, weren't telling me the truth, all the other things you told me? That this time you have to say, well, to be honest with you, or to tell you the truth, or honestly, I'll never use those. I don't think you should either. I think you should eliminate those as much as possible or completely. Because they want someone who's ethical, someone who has morals and values, and we know you have your core values. You have what you know, what you stand for. You know what you're about. So they want someone ethical with morals and values, and and then they want proof of past results. They want proof that you're not just talking a bunch of bullshit. That you can make this happen for them. So social proof. They want to see some social proof. They want to know. And this is why we go over unique values so much. And think about it. This is the stuff that the your prospect or even your current clients to resell them. This is the shit they want to know. And this is the stuff we've been drilling for months. That's why we go over this stuff. And you need to get this stuff down. You should never stop practicing this stuff. Just because we learned something and practiced something two, three months ago, that is not good enough. You need to be doing this stuff on a regular basis, like weekly basis, daily basis on some things like sales. They want to know, how are you better than the place down the street? And why are you so much more expensive if you are? How are you better than them? What makes you better? What makes you not just better? What makes you different? That's even more important than better. Of course, you want to say what makes you better, but you're going to tell them what makes you better by saying what makes you different. That's what they want. They want to know why, what makes you different? Why do you charge? Why should they hand over their hard-earned money to you? Because listen, pe people are going to be spenders. People spend money. They spend money on everything they own. It's just a matter of you convincing them to part ways with their money for what you have to offer. And they want to know they're not alone in that fact, that they're not the first person. That's why they want to know the social proof. They want to know they're not the first. They want to know they're not going to be the last in their situation. Show them. Tell them stories. Show them case studies. Show them examples of people just like them in their same demographic. And in, in one of your avatars of just like them that, that this program or your product or your service has helped. So that's where the testimonials and social proof comes back in. If you can show a video 
of a, of a testimony, a quick little 30 second clip of someone going through that, going through those pain points, overcoming some of those objections for you, one of your clients about where they were, what they were struggling with, how you helped them and where they are now in a couple of seconds. That's what they need because they fear they're going to sign the dotted line with you for your service, your product, and they're going to be forgotten the second they sign up. They fear that there's going to be no ongoing support, no ongoing relationships. You need to convince them. Listen, when you sign up with us, this the, the relationship is not ending. That is just the start of the relationship. That's it. That is just the start. We just begin dating when you sign up. The relationship is just beginning. And then when it comes to signing on the dotted line, they want some options. So give them two options in the beginning. But you should know in your head several other backup options for payment plans, for terms and conditions and interest rates, whatever it is, however it fits your model. You should know many different options to, to reorganize shit to make the sale happen without losing money, without losing profit, of course. We're just saying ways to restructure stuff, payment plans, down payments, whatever, terms and conditions, whatever you want to say, because they need choices sometimes. They need choices. And you need to be that co-buyer helping them out. Well, maybe this will work better for you. Help them decide. And then when they're done, they don't want buyer's remorse. They're going to have buyer's remorse, but they want to validate their purchase. So you're going to sell them on emotion and you're going to ver they're going to they're going to justify it and verify it with logic. So a follow-up text with them, a follow-up email afterwards convincing them, you know, that they made the right choice. And during this whole process, say they give you some objections. Listen, they don't want to be argue with. They, they you know they've been doing shit the wrong way probably for a while. They've been using the wrong service. You're not going to argue with them, make them feel stupid. They don't want to feel stupid. They don't want to. They don't want to feel stupid. They don't want to be confused with the way they're explaining shit. They don't want to be proved wrong. So don't go into argument just because you want to be right. Just because you're right and pro proving someone wrong, even if you're right, is probably going to lose you the freaking sale. So don't worry about being right. Worry about just getting that that, that common ground with them without making it an argument. You have to understand. And, and so they were doing shit the wrong way. It's not their fault. It's your fault for not finding them sooner. It's not their fault. It's it's They just didn't know what, what to do. They didn't know the right answer. So it's not their fault. So they don't want to be feel stupid. They don't want to feel wrong. They don't want to be argued with. They don't want to be told how they've wasted so much time and money and wasted years of their life with the wrong service. They don't want to hear none of that shit. It's just going to bra drag them down. They don't want to hear it. They bring that stuff up. Fine. Don't Don't bring it up yourself. Because they don't want to be talked down to. They don't want that condescending voice like, oh, how stupid you are for doing this. Like, they should have known better that they were going down the wrong path. They were wasting their time. They are wasting money. They don't want to be talked down to. You know what they want? They want to feel fucking good. They want to feel important like a VIP up in your place. That's what they want to feel like. They want to feel good. It's so, so simple. People will pay to feel good. They'll pay more to feel good for an inferior product than a, a, a superior product that, that they don't feel good getting in, involved with. And that comes down to obviously your experience, your relationship with them, the way you're interacting with them, your rapport that you build with them, all that good stuff. Because they want to feel good. What does that mean? They want to be happy. They want to laugh. They want results. They want fucking hope is what they want. They want you to be interested in them. No one, again, no one in their life is, is interested in them the way you need to show you have interest in them. Like real interest. Because you're in, you're in this, whatever, you're in your business because you have interest in that field and you definitely need to have interest in the people that you're going to be helping. So they need someone that's truly interesting, not a bullshitter that's, I did a, a one of those timeshare things. You, there was something in New York City one time that, that you had to go to one of those timeshare meetings years ago. And the guy was telling me about all this stuff about my hometown. This is in New York City. He's telling me we're like in 45 minutes outside New York City. He's telling me all about the high school, the colors, how he used to live here in this county. I know he was bullshitting. He told me the street he used to live on and all this, the high school he went to, his, his teachers. I know he just researched it. I know he was full of shit. It was disgusting to me. Disgusting. I know he was full of shit. He was not from my town. They try to find that common ground. They do their research and they make it try to be so believable. But it was just, it's disgusting when they do that stuff. So they don't want to bullshit. They want something that's really interesting in them. And don't lie and say you like rollerblading if you fucking never rollerbladed in your life. If they say they go rollerblading. You can say that sounds cool. You like fun things. You like adventurous. You love the activity. So that sounds awesome. That's how you can find that, you know, turn that into common ground. But don't say you like something if you don't. Because and they don't want to feel pressured. They don't want to feel like you're that sleaze ball that's just appeasing them in whatever they're saying. You know what they do want? They want to buy your product and service. But they do not want to be sold. Let them buy. Stop trying to sell them. They will buy. Be the assistant buyer, not the seller, if that makes sense. 
put this all together, go close some fucking deals this week, make a little bit of extra money, don't make the mistakes we talked about yesterday, give them what they want, we're talking about today, we're going to continue this on tomorrow, I will talk to you later, you are freaking awesome, mentorship, motivator, no excuses.